greetings of the day to all of you i welcome you all to the 15th lecture in our series of lectures on basic electrical engineering in the last class we have started off with ac power analysis where we discussed the concept of instantaneous and average power in ac circuits we also found out that uh, elements such as inductances and capacitances do not consume any average power that is no net work is done by these elements however uh, they are associated with some instantaneous power which means that they consume energy in one half cycle and then they release that energy back to the source in another half cycle such that the average over a complete cycle is zero that means the average power associated with l and c is zero so it is only the resistances that have a net consumption of power today we will discuss the concept of complex power or apparent power real and reactive power and power factor let's begin with um, a time domain representation of a voltage signal vm cos omega t you can very well take a sine signal i have taken a cosine signal so that you know it is intuitive to represent it in the phasor domain so if i represent its phasor with an arrow i'm using an arrow to avoid any confusion in the phasor domain this uh, signal will be represented as vm at an angle of zero it may have a phase but again for simplicity i have assumed that the voltage signal has a phase of zero now uh, in the same circuit where this voltage is applied let me assume that some current i m cos of omega t minus theta is flowing or i can say that in the phasor domain current uh, is i m at an angle of minus theta now previously in the last lecture we uh, found out voltage and current relationships i mean uh, the instantaneous power independently for r l and c this is a more generalized approach where i'm taking theta and if the if the load is a pure resistance then automatically theta will be zero if load is an inductance then theta will be equal to 90 degree and if load is a capacitance then it will be minus 90 so it's minus minus will become plus over here and uh, then you know the analysis is a more generalized analysis by assuming some angle theta if i find out the average power um, or sorry the instantaneous power it will simply be equal to the product of the instantaneous voltages and currents so i can write the instantaneous power as vm i m cos of omega t into cos omega t cos theta plus sine omega t sine theta and i can further write this as v m i m cos square omega t cos of theta which i can write as 1 plus cos 2 omega t by 2 into cos of theta plus sine omega t cos omega t will become sine 2 omega t by 2 into sine of theta so i can say that my instantaneous power is vm i m by 2 into cos theta plus cos theta cos 2 omega t plus sine theta sine 2 omega t where theta is the angle with which the current uh, lags behind voltage when the voltage is assumed to be at a phase of zero or in other words you can also call theta as the phase difference between the voltage uh, phases between the phases of voltage and current so if a uh, voltage vector has a angle of theta v and a current vector has an uh, an angle of um, theta i something like this then theta v minus theta i will be your um, theta right so theta is basically the phase difference between voltage and current so in our case the phase of voltage is zero the phase of 
current is minus theta therefore the phase resistance is zero minus theta so that is theta right so theta here is a phase difference between voltage and current phase of voltage minus phase of current okay so now this is my expression for instantaneous power and i can also find uh, the average power which is uh, which we have already discussed that it is the integral over the time period right integral integral of the instantaneous uh, power over the time divided by the time period so the average power i can assume the time period to be pi because i know that uh, for a signal with omega t the power uh, the time period is 2 pi but uh, for a signal of frequency 2 omega t because you have two omega t components here the period will obviously be only half because frequency is double so the pre uh, period is only pi so i integrate it from 0 to pi this signal the integration of uh, cos theta because theta is constant right so cos theta will simply be cos theta into omega t and the limits are pi minus zero so when i integrate it over these limits this is what my integration will give me the uh, integration of cos 2 omega t will be sine 2 omega t by 2 and then there is cos theta along with it and the limits are 0 to pi and then the last term is uh, plus sine 2 omega t will have an integration of minus cos 2 omega t by 2 into sine of theta and the limits of this integration will be 0 to pi right so this is my expression for average power in a generalized ac circuit where i do not know the elements uh, in the in, you know in the load or the impedance i don't know i just know the uh, phase difference between voltage and current so if we further solve for the average power it is equal to 1 upon pi cos theta oh sorry i also had terms uh, vm im by 2 multiplying the whole thing so this is cos theta into pi uh, sine over these limits will become zero and cos over these limits will also become zero because cos of zero will be one minus cos of two times pi will also be one so one minus one will be equal to zero so this term also becomes zero and this term also becomes zero and i am left with v m i m by two so pi and pi will go Therefore, I have a generalized expression for power in an AC circuit and that is P is equal to V M I M by 2 cos of theta. Now, I know that for a resistor, theta is equal to 0 because current and voltage are in phase. Therefore, cos theta is equal to 1 or I can say that P is equal to V M I M by 2 which is what we had already found out in the last class. And if, um, so power is, zero, uh, is you know, VMIM by 2. And if the load is an inductance, then in that case, we know that theta over here is equal to 90 degrees. And cos of 90 is 0, so of course power is 0. If uh, C, the, uh, the load is capacitive, then theta is equal to minus 90 degrees, such that the current leads by plus 90, because minus and minus is plus so theta is minus 90 degrees and again cos of theta is zero so power average power associated with a capacitive circuit is zero of course if your circuit is rl or lc or rc or a combination of all the three then theta will have discrete values depending upon uh, the values of you know what um uh, is dominating whether it's R, L or C. So it can be 35 degrees plus or minus or anything like that. So this is a more generalized uh, analysis which will give you power in a, uh, in a circuit where you do not exactly know whether it is R, L, C or a combination of uh, all the three. So this is the expression for power in an AC circuit, right? Uh, a generalized expression. I can also write it as P is equal to V R M S into i rms into cos of theta where v rms is vm by root 2 and i rms is im by root 2 im and vm being the peak values of voltage and 
करना Now I know that this is a generalized expression for uh, my easy power. So this is the expression that you are going to use probably for the rest of your life. And um, if you observe this, and if you compare it with a DC circuit, there you generally say that power is equal to V into I. If you compare it, there is an additional term called cos of theta. intuitively you know that the product of voltage and current is also power right but in ac circuits the product of voltage current and some other term is your average power right now this product that is vrms into irms is also known as apparent power or s they have given it a very nice term called apparent power because it is vrms irms so it is like it appears that this power is being drawn from the supply the product of vrms and irms that is what appears that you are appear it appears that you are drawing this amount of power from the circuit but the actual power that is doing work is only vrms irms into cos of theta which will all obviously um be between 0 to 1 so obviously the real power will always the actual power or the average power you call it um the more common terminology is real power for p okay so the real power is always less than or equal to the apparent power because it measures the actual amount of power being consumed in the circuit whereas the apparent power or s you as you may call it it gives you an idea or it um, gives you an apparent um, um uh, value of power it appears like this power is being drawn from the circuit but actually vrms irms into cos theta that is s cos theta is being drawn from the circuit let me explain it a little more i can say that um p is equal to v into i into cos theta i'm just skipping rms but you know that these are rms values because for phasors now we will use arrows so this is v rms i rms into cos theta and i can also say that p is equal to s cos of theta now this cos of theta is equal to p upon s and this is what you call as the power factor so when i tell you and i ask you what is power factor everybody quickly says it's cos of the angle uh, between you know the voltage and current waveforms but if i want to physically uh, explain power factor it tells you that what fraction of the apparent power is actually useful or is actually real in nature or is actually doing work because you know that um a circuit may have r l and c and in the pre previous class we have seen that l and c do not consume any real power that means they do not do any work but if they are connected in a circuit they will contribute to apparent power but they will not contribute to any real power as a result the apparent power in the circuit will be some value say 100 but the real power will only be 60 so the the source will have to give away energy worth 100 units but only 60 units will be actually doing work and the remaining units which is not 100 minus 60 because these are all phasors we will discuss that later the remaining units will uh, be actually contributing to uh, the energy you know the lnc components in the circuit which will be consuming energy sending it back consuming energy sending in back it's just unnecessary um, sloshing of react uh, of power you, you know it's called sloshing because it goes to and fro to and fro so this is this term is called as sloshing of energy so basically what happens is uh, that power factor is an important parameter because it tells you that how much of the um, apparent power is actually a real in nature is actually doing work and the remaining is uh, just um, you know it's just useless it's it's just um, unwanted 
it's only um, because of the presence of L and C that it, that uh, power is you know going to and fro in the circuit and only the resistive part of the power is average power that is actually doing work so therefore we would always want to find out the value of power factor and uh, because it's a cosine value so we know that its value will range from 0 to 1 now if i say that the power factor is 1 it means that uh, real power is equal to apparent power or it means uh, that there is only resistance in the circuit right if i say that the uh, power factor is, is 0 it means that there is no real power in the circuit that means p is equal to 0 which means that either the uh, in uh, the circuit has only l or the circuit has only c or it has a combination of l and c and if you have uh, values of power factor between 0 to 1 any values these can mean that your uh, circuit has a combination of r l or r c or r l and c now this brings us to uh, before uh, after discussing power factor let's discuss apparent power in greater detail so this was a magnitude of apparent power that was the rms value of voltage into the rms value of current this is just the magnitude of apparent power a better way of defining uh, this power is complex power where they say that S is basically a vector or you can say a phasor, not a vector, a phasor, which is the product of voltage phasor and the phasor of current, but it's conjugate, right? Now, before uh, we started this analysis, we knew that the voltage phasor is something like Vm at an angle of 0 and the current phasor is Im at an angle of minus theta. If we solve for this a little more, we have this as Vm at an angle of 0 into Im at an angle of theta because of the conjugate right if i i is i am at an angle of minus theta then i conjugate will be i am at an angle of plus theta right so i can say uh, this is vm i am at an angle of theta there is also a term 1 by 2 1 by 2 1 by 2 so you basically define complex power as the 1 by 2 times the product of voltage phasor into the conjugate of current phasor and let's solve for it when we solve for this we get the complex power s apparent power is simply the magnitude of complex power the complex power s is half of vm i m at an angle of theta and we can say it is half of vm i m into cos of theta plus half of vm i m into j times sine of theta or i can say that complex power is this we have just now calculated to be p plus j of half of vm i am sine of theta which is called as q all right so in terms of magnitude we already had s cos theta is equal to p we were when we were dealing with magnitudes but now we are doing dealing in the complex of phasor domain and we see that s is equal to p plus j q or you can say that the complex power has two components a real component that is your average power which does work and another component known as the reactive component which is associated with reactive elements such as L and C elements that introduce an impedance X whether positive or negative it is uh, the power which does not do any work the you know the um, power associated with elements that only contribute to storing energy and then releasing energy such that the average power is zero 
so reactive power is power that does not do any work it is unnecessary in the system and it is undesired undesirable to have reactive power flowing in the system because it's not giving you anything so if you have a heater um, uh, with a resistance the heat when the resistance current flows through the resistance it heats up so it's giving you heat or if you have a light bulb uh, with some resistance current flows through it and it gives you light so these things are actually doing work but when you have l and c in the circuit they're not doing any work they are consuming energy and then they are sent in one half cycle and then they are sending that energy back to the source again and again that energy flows to and fro in the system which is known as sloshing of reactive power and it is undesirable to have so much of reactive power flowing in the system therefore you use the term power factor to find out that how much power in the system uh, is actually doing work as compared to the apparent power of the system. So uh, power factor is just a measure of uh, the amount of power in the system which is actually real or doing work out of the total apparent power drawn from the system. So now we have three quantities. You have uh, the complex power S which is P plus JQ, where P is the real power and Q is the reactive power and S is the complex power. The magnitude of S, which is also known as apparent power, will simply be equal to P square plus Q square. You can draw equivalence of this. A circuit has an impedance Z which is R plus JX. The real part of the impedance is resistance and the imaginary part is the reactance which is produced by uh, which is you know there in the circuit due to L and C and reactive power is in the circuit due to L and C. A real power in the circuit is drawn only by the resistances. The magnitude of this Z is R square plus X square. And just like you say that power is equal to S cos theta, or you can say reactive power is equal to S sine theta. Similarly, you say from the impedances that resistance is equal to Z cos theta and reactance is equal to z sine of theta so the same circuit you can represent it in terms of impedances or you can represent it in terms of complex real and reactive powers when you do a power representation you can often draw a power triangle this is theta this is q this is p and this is s and if you represent the same thing this is known as a power triangle and if you represent the same information through impedances then obviously this will be r this will be x and this will be z all right so same information of a circuit you can represent it in terms of uh, impedances or in terms of uh, real reactive and apparent powers now let's do a small question okay before we do the question i also want to discuss the units with you right so the units of complex power we know that uh, complex power is simply in terms of you know the apparent power in terms of its magnitude it is simply equal to v into i rms values right so it's natural that it will have a unit of volt amperes we call it va so the unit of apparent power is VA, but the power that actually does work, which is your real power, its unit is Watt. And the remaining power, that is Q, is represented in WAR, or kilowatt, or kilowatt, or KVA. Okay, so there are three things. One is the volt amperes or uh, VA, another is the Watt, and the last one is the VA reactive or WAR, right? So basically, this is what appears that you're drawing from the system. Out of that, this 
is what you actually use in the system which is useful which is doing work and this one is just going to and fro in the system it's not doing any work and power factor tells you that how much of the total volt amperes is actually useful the remaining is only useless it's only going to and fro it's only uh, you know it's only sloshing between the source and the reactive elements lmc so now let's do a question the question says that you have a voltage signal 60 cos of omega t minus 10 and you also have a current flowing in the circuit which is 1.5 cos of omega t plus 50. In this circuit you have to find the apparent power, the real power, the reactive power, the power factor and the impedance of the circuit. So all these parameters you have to find. Now uh, we know that the complex power as a phasor is equal to half of voltage phasor into conjugate of current phasor. The voltage phasor you can write it as 60 at an angle of minus 10 and the current phasor you can write it as 1.5 at an angle of plus 50. Please remember if they are sinusoidal signals you have to convert them into cosinusoidal signals and then write their phasors. Okay so this is the phasor representation. In, if you want to find the complex power, it will be half of 60 into 1.5 into uh, angle will be minus 10 minus 50 because conjugate of this will be minus 50, right? So this will be minus 60. This is I, so I conjugate will be 1.5 at an angle of minus 50, right? So this is my complex power. And if I want to find the apparent power, right? Apparent power will just be the magnitude. That is 13 to 1.5. That is 45 VA. This is my apparent power. I have found the apparent power. What about P? P will simply be equal to the real power, will simply be equal to S cos of theta, okay? And S is 45, cos theta is cos of minus 60. Why minus 60? Because theta is voltage, phase, uh, phase of voltage minus phase of current minus 50 so that is minus 60 right so this is the real power is 45 into cos of 30 first cos of 60 that is 22.5 watt this is another answer then we have to find the reactive power which will be s sine of theta which will be 45 into sine of minus 60 which will be minus because sine of minus theta is minus sine theta so you have 45 into sine of minus 60 that is th minus 38.9 sorry this is reactive power q 0.97 war so this is your reactive power. This minus sign is also very interesting. This minus sign tells you that the circuit is capacitive or it is also known as leading wars. If Q is positive, they are known as lagging wars. That means that the circuit is uh, inductive in nature. Generally, this information is contained within the power factor also. For instance, I can say that the power factor of a circuit, cos of theta, is 0.6. 
which means that only 60% of the total apparent power is real in nature and the remaining power is reactive. But is it inductive or is it capacitive? So I also need to often say that it is 0.6 lagging or it is 0.6 leading which means that does the current lag the voltage or which means it's an inductive circuit or does the current lead the uh, voltage which means it is a, a capacitive circuit so very often with the uh, power factor you will also need information about uh, the nature of the load whether it is lagging or leading a 0.6 power factor might be maybe lagging le uh, sorry lagging or it might be leading for lagging power factor q is positive or you can say the circuit is inductive but for leading power factor q is negative or you can say that the circuit is capacitive in both the cases, Q is not doing work. Q is positive means it is inductive. Q is negative means it is capacitive. When you go in higher semesters, you uh, may be acquainted with the terminology called inductors consume reactive power and capacitors produce reactive power. But you always need to remember that uh, this is just a terminology or you can say it's a misnomer because nobody is really consuming or releasing energy. They are just, you know, taking energy and then giving it back. They've just used a generalized expression Q ka positive hai because, or um, sorry, inductor ka positive hai or capacitor ka negative hai because you know that when inductor consumes, when it's taking energy, that time capacitor is releasing energy, right? This is the only uh, uh, reason why they have different signs because when inductor absorbs energy, capacitor releases it. But in the next cycle, the inductor absorbs it and the, uh, sorry, the inductor releases it and the capacitor absorbs it so reactive power is never really consumed by anybody because that uh, any uh, element because that particular component of power is only going to and fro but yes in higher semesters or even in the semester you may come across books that may say that inductors consume um, reactive power and capacitors release or produce reactive power the basic concept is just that they uh, both uh, uh, contribute towards sloshing of reactive power but uh, they do it in opposite cycles i mean one when one is taking the other is giving okay so lagging is for inductors which is positive reactive power and leading is for capacitors which is negative reactive power all right then so this was about um, how we found out p we found out q we also ha had to find out a power factor cos of theta so cos of theta is 0.5 in our case because theta is uh, minus 10 minus 50 that is minus 60 and this power factor is leading because even if you see the expression for current it is uh, it is ahead of voltage so this power factor is leading in nature because reactive power is negative finally you have to find uh, the impedance z which you can say is the voltage phasor by the current phasor the voltage says phasor is 60 at an angle of minus 10 and the current phasor is 1.5 at an angle of plus 50 so this becomes uh, 60 by 1.5 at an angle of minus 60 so you can say this is 40 at an angle of minus 60 this is your z the question does not ask you to find r or x but yes 40 cos of minus 60 is r and 40 sine of minus 60 is x which will be a minus value and that means x will be contributed via capacitance Okay, so these, these are all in, interrelated informations. Uh, negative reactive power, negative reactive power means negative x, which means uh, there is a capacitance in the circuit, which means that the current is leading. The power factor is less than one, but leading in nature. Similarly, if Q is positive, it means that x in the circuit is positive, which means it is contributed by an inductance, which means that the current is lagging behind voltage and uh, power factor is less than one, but lagging. So this brings us to the concept of a very interesting concept of power factor correction. Generally, uh, it's not taught very often in the first semester, 
but uh, i'll give you a very brief information because you are new to the subject i don't want to overload you uh, with this information but it's a very interesting concept suppose i have a source of ac voltage phasor v right and uh, this is my power system it has a long line and uh, it suppose it's my distribution network this is my grid and then i have a load and most loads are rl type loads which means they have inductances and resistances the resistance is a useful part but there is also an inductance in the circuit right uh, for example if you have a motor in your home that you use to pump water to another floor uh that motor has some inductance and then that motor has an equivalent resistance or you can say it draws some power from the source with which which it consumes to take that water up to the second floor so that is your useful power p but at the same time it also has some inductance which is contributing to q which means that this motor in order for this motor to take water up to the second floor it needs first that it should also draw some reactive power from the system which means that it will draw energy in one half cycle then return it back draw energy in the first half cycle then in the second you know in the subsequent cycles then re return it back and meanwhile it will also be consuming some energy to take water up but simultaneously it will also be wasting some energy by taking it uh, consuming it giving it back taking it giving it back due to the reactive nature of this motor now you may say that why is it undesirable why is it undesirable that the motor is taking energy and then returning it back because when the motor is asking for reactive power from the system it means that more currents will flow in the system right because there will be currents con uh, corresponding to real power and there will be currents corresponding to reactive power as well and when large magnitude of currents flow in the system then they will cause large number of drops in your transmission lines because they have some resistance right large number of drops large number of losses power losses will happen in the transmission lines in your connecting leads in your wires and you're just unnecessarily making the source stressed to provide larger currents that is not going to be that energy is not going to be consumed by the motor it will come back to the source but why make that unnecessary flow of energy in the circuit therefore it brings us to the point of power factor correction to the concept of power factor correction so this circuit like i said that this circuit uh, has some reactive power requirement so it will draw some power p sorry s apparent power s is equal to p plus qj which means its power factor cos theta will be p upon s and it will be less than one right because obviously when you have reactive power then obviously p will be less than s and therefore power factor will be less than one or you can say that the circuit has reactive power requirement or you can say that the source is unnecessary sending energy and getting it back sending energy and getting it back unnecessary flow of extra currents in the circuit which can cause heating and which can stress the source therefore in such cases we want that we may want to do power factor correction in some grids they actually even make you pay for power factor jaise agar aap ghar ke bahar dekho aap jo meters lage hote hain you are generally you are made to pay for the power that you consume but some cases especially industrial consumers they are also made to pay for the reactive power therefore a uh, very often what they do at the distribution end is that they try to correct the reactor power and how will you correct the reactor power i have given this concept to you even in the previous class without even discussing power factor that l and c try to uh, compensate for each other because you know that when inductance is consume energy that time capacitances are storing energy and when uh, when connected to the same line and when uh, the other is releasing the you know the com the other is doing a complement reaction so what we basically do in power factor correction is once the first cycle someone will start store energy and then the inductance and capacitance will just keep on giving energy to each other 
if you balance them so well that their energy requirements are exactly equal and opposite to each other, their reactive power requirements, then in that case, the source will see only this resistance, which means it will see that there is only uh, a resistance connected in the circuit and your power factor will become unity. But you may also have that, you know, you're, they're not 100% cancelling each other. That is also a case scenario right so we'll do some questions on power factor correction and that will make your things more you know th that will make things more clear to you that how we do it so let's start with the first question you have to find out the value of c capacitor to be connected across a load in a system that consumes 140 you have a load that is consuming 140 kilowatt at power factor 0 0.85 lagging so it's inductive and you had to make this power factor unity by connecting a capacitance you have to find the value of that capacitance and it is given to you that the source is 220 volts 60 hertz generally the european system uh, sorry the um, united states the system is 60 hertz and 110 to 120 volts this one is a rare one, 220 and 60 hertz. But anyways, because here in India, we have 220 volts or 230 volts at 50 hertz. And uh, in Europe also, that is the trend. And in United States, it is um, 110 volts at 60 hertz. Anyways, this is your voltage and this is your load. And you have to find the value of capacitance to correct this power factor from 0.85 and bring it to 1. So that the source sees that is only giving real power to the system and no reactive power to the system. For that, let's first see, first, before I have not done any correction, the apparent power in the system is, say, S1. It is equal to P1 plus J Q1, right? And I know that Q1 is equal to 140 kilowatt. After I have done correction, then I know that cos theta will be equal to I have to make it unity after correction. So P will be equal to S. Or I can say that after correction S2 will be equal to P2. And obviously Q2 will be equal to 0. Because that after that there will be no requirement of reactive power um, as observed by the source. Which means that before compensation, before correction, the reactive power requirement of the load was 150 kilowatt and after compensation the requirement seen by the source is zero the difference between the two that is minus 140 kilowatt minus sign means capacitance that has to be provided by a capacitor so what will the capacitor provide the capacitance will provide exactly the same amount that is 150 the magnitude of reactive power provided is 140,000 because it's kilowatt how much reactive power will the capacitance provide it will be equal to the voltage across the capacitor squared by the impedance of this capacitor right so what is the impedance of the capacitor in terms of magnitude it is 1 upon omega c so this becomes omega goes here c goes here Right, so the value of C can be found out as 140 upon 220 square into omega is 2 into pi into 60. So you have 140, sorry, 140,000 divided by 220 square divided by 2 divided by pi divided by 60 which is 7.67 millifarad that is the value of capacitance which you will connect here and then the source will see that it has to provide energy only to this resistor right now let's do another question the second question says that you have a source of power 120 uh, of voltage 120 volt and 60 hertz which is your united system united states system of uh, voltage and then you have um, a load 
which has a power requirement of 4 kilowatt at a power factor of 0 0.8 and it is lagging in nature right so you have to find the value of capacitance c required to make the power factor not unity but 0.95 so earlier your system had some active power and some reactive power if you draw the power triangle i'm drawing it in between the circuit because i don't have space is p q and s from the power triangle you know that tan theta is equal to q by p right so i can say that initially in the circuit q1 is equal to p1 tan theta initially my re reactive power requirement in the circuit let's find that out it will be equal to p1 which is 4 kilowatt so 4000 into tan of theta cos theta is 0 0.8 so i can find cos inverse 0 0.8 which will give me the angle which is 36.86 so tan of this is 3 by 4 into 4000 is equal to 3000 so initially before i have connected any capacitor in the circuit before I have connected any uh, capacitor in the circuit, my reactive power requirement of the load is 3000 watt. Okay, so it is 3000 watt Q1. After I connect the capacitor, there will be a new apparent power as seen by the source. Real power will remain the same and there will be a new reactive power q2 right p1 will remain the same because real power to source ko se hi dena usko utna hi 4 kilowatt dena padega load ko now q2 will be equal to p tan theta 2 p is the same 4000 tan of cos inverse what is cos theta 2 it is 0 0.95 0 0.95 so after compensation your angle between um, source voltage and um, sorry between source voltage and source current will be cos inverse 95 that is sorry cos inverse 0 0.95 that is 18.18 tan of this angle into real power is equal to 4000 so after compensation the source will feel that it doesn't have to give uh, 3000 watt it has to give only 1314.736 watt so you find it by p tan theta 2 and you find the previous pa uh, power by p tan theta 1 p is remaining the same real power ko to koi aur provide karna karega nahi real power to hamesha source se hi aana hai so what does the capacitor have to provide capacitor has to provide q2 minus q1 which is this minus this will obviously obviously be negative so it is total 1685.26 negative yes so the capacitor has to provide in magnitude 1685.26 divided by zc which is uh, sorry this is uh, sorry 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 this is the reactive power of the capacitor this will be equal to voltage across the capacitor squared by impedance of the capacitor voltage we know is uh, sorry it is 120 volts so 120 square into omega c because this goes up so 2 into pi into 60 into c is equal to 1685.26 from this i can find the value of c it will be 120 it is divided by 120 square divided by 2 divided by pi divided by 60 mm, this is 3.10 into 10 raised power minus 4 farad or i can say in microfarad i can convert it into microfarad it is 310.5 micro farad 
all right so 310.5 microfarad if you farad if you connect in the circuit then it looks like your power factor improves from 0.8 to 0.95 I'll give you another concept of power factor correction, another way of seeing power factor correction. So I have a circuit with a voltage V and I have an inductive load which is drawing some current I at an angle of theta lagging behind the voltage. What my purpose is that I want the source to see that it is sending only real power. It is not sending any reactive power. That means it should see that there is only a resistance connected in the circuit. If I want to do complete power factor correction, make the power factor unity, right? If I want to make the power factor unity, to do this, I will connect a capacitor that draws a leading current instead of a lagging current, say at plus 90 degrees. So what will be the amount of la uh, leading current that the capacitor will draw? Such that the capacitor current plus the existing load current, the, let call, let's call it I0 and let's call it IC. Together they will add up to give me a grid current or a source current that is at unity power factor. Right? So this is how we will design on the capacitor in the circuit. It is also possible that my inductance, that my circuit is completely inductive at the load is completely at minus 90 degree then i will generate an equal and opposite current taken up by the capacitor so that they ca cancel each other there is no resistance then obviously the source will not give any power because there is no resistance in the circuit you know then it will not give any current these two will cancel out each other right so that is your case of lc oscillations no current will flow from the circuit after some time current will only or slosh between these two so this is the concept of power factor correction and i hope it is clear it's a little tricky to understand but if you have any doubts or any queries you can always uh, contact me that's all for today thank you